Hey everyone, your designers are here. I'm Anita at Cedar Hill Farmhouse. And I'm Yvonne at Stone Gable. And I'm Kelly at My Soulful Home. And we're here with tips and tricks and decorating advice for you. So let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. It's episode 119. This is going to be fun. How to spoil overnight guests. Well, I'm taking notes because uh, when I come to visit you, I'm expecting all these things to be done. <laughs> the yeah. red carpet will be rolled out. We're going to have to walk I'm, I'm walk. packing my bag right now, baby. Not just talk the talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it is so fun to be spoiled as an overnight guest, and it's fun to spoil your overnight mm -hmm. guests. Um, I guess as long as your overnight guests don't stay too long, they can be I spoiled. think that's right. I think that's the trick. As Short long and as they sweet. they don't stay too long, it works great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who would like to kick it off with uh, an idea or a tip on how to spoil your overnight guests? I've got an idea. Bring it. Well, uh, at our farm, we don't actually have a guest room. So I have to be a little bit creative. And in the girls' room, we actually ended up putting three twin beds. So there's room for one female guest on one bed. So, mm -hmm. so they don't get a whole... Uh, room, sadly, or they can sleep on the day bed in the living room. So we did make that a day bed instead of a sofa. So it's, it's, it's uh, flexible. So it can be used for sleeping as well. But, uh, you know, I was very concerned. I mean, guests don't obviously have a lot of privacy. There's, you don't have your own room. In fact, there, because we put three beds in there, it's a small house. There's really no chairs in the room. So what I did was I put a long bench at the foot of each bed. So that way you can, you can put your suitcase on there. You can sit there putting your shoes on, whatever. You're not going to want to sit there, you know, for an hour reading your favorite novel, but it's a place to sit or put your suitcase. And then the other thing I did was to put underneath the bench a basket. So each person has their own personal basket and that's where you can put, you know, your backpack, your purse, or maybe the clothes that, you know, you've already worn if you want to keep them separate from your clean clothes. So Anyway, so that's kind of a little something we've done in the room. Mm -hmm. it, I think that's great. And there are going to be so many people that don't have a dedicated guest room, whether you just your house doesn't have that extra room or you've created that room and use it as an office or you use it as a craft room or something like that. Everybody doesn't have the dedicated guest mm -hmm. room that sits right. with the bed but made waiting for arrival. So mm -hmm. there are a lot yeah, of things you can do. Yeah, sure. and there's ways to make them feel so <laughs> spoiled and mm -hmm. and graciously treat them that they don't really care or if they're sleeping you in can, your living room. You can have four dedicated guest rooms. Like <laughs> oh yes, well we because don't everybody all have grows Stone up Gable. And, well, but but everybody grows up and goes away at some point. Yeah, and um, guest. Um, and well, bedrooms, some houses have that. We have, we have yet to experience mm -hmm. that here. Nobody's <laughs> <wrong. There's laughs> been no your moving nest, your out nest and is on. Way well, too cozy. Yeah, my here, nest is quite full still. Mm -hmm. But here's how, um, here's a couple just real practical things to spoil your guests. Don't put your guest on a bed you wouldn't sleep on. Oh, very On true. a mattress. Mm -hmm. Because there is nothing worse for your good night's sleep than a poor mattress. And also pillows. Don't give your guests the pillows that you smush down, except if you're Kevin. I know. Doesn't he like the smushy? Well, he likes, yeah, flat. the smushed. But, you know, his parents had a summer place in North Carolina. I mean, just this little cabin in the woods, uh, in the mountains. And we used to go visit them there. And they did not believe in buying new mattresses. They believe they brought, I think, their old stuff out there to that house. A, a oh, lot of people. Right. And so yeah. when I was pregnant, I remember you know, you kind of sunk in the middle anyway, and my <laughs> belly just went right in the middle. <laughs> oh. <of> the <laughs> it's really important. And nowadays, a good mattress that like a, a mattress that you're not going to use every night, but it would be a really good mattress for uh, an occasional guest, maybe once a month to sleep on. They're not that expensive and buy new pillows. I keep both foam and, or down and alternative and a down pillows. Um, and depending on what my guests like, they can choose again. I don't have to buy the most expensive, but that way my guests 
can choose the kind of pillows that they're most comfortable with. And uh, here's the, uh, here's my other pet peeve. Don't give your guest your worn out sheets. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm going to add on to that. Don't give them those soap bars that look like there's, like you could break them in half. Like those old soap bars, you know? <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? They uh-huh. they look like they're been around for about five years. You know, I don't use soap bars in my house at all because I don't like the whole soap Well, I've thing. heard the queen does use them in her castle or whatever. Well, palace. she has somebody to clean those I, the well, shower she's got, and the sink. No, I guarantee you somebody comes every day and just throws a, those old puppies out and gets <laughs> new ones. But, you know, but yes, I mean, I think uh, unless you're changing those out to new ones when you have guests, I do recommend using those soap container, you know, the, mm-hmm. the liquid the mm-hmm. liquid soap, yeah, yeah. the bath or save or up, gel. Yeah, or mm-hmm. save up all the little pretty ones that you get from the hotels or yeah, a nice little thing and make out. a little basket of those or something like that. And I know Oprah used to say that anytime she had guests, she would set out new soap bars because she was grossed out by the old ones. And of, But of course, she had someone to do that for she her. She has so a soap bar replacer. I'm sure she has a person just <laughs> dedicated to replacing yeah, this. Well, I right. don't – I would not use a used soap bar – so I don't use them in my house either. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, good. Some- I thought it was just the me, the germaphobe. No, good. Here's, here's no, I'm not. I'm not thing. down with those either anymore. Okay. I was saying, so t- touching on the pillow situation. Mm-hmm. So we're let's think of these wonderful little ways to spoil. Um, and giving you someone a used soap bar could be a way to spoil the trip, not spoil the guests. So <laughs> in a bad way. In a bad way. In a bad, way. In a bad mm-hmm. way. So here we go. Here's a spoiler. A good spoiler. How about a little pillow present? It does just oh, something tucked yes. under their pillow. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about this. And, you know, here I am. I mean, I am like tight with the tooth fairy. I kind of miss her now because I haven't seen her in a while. But oh, for years, I was so tight with the, the tooth fairy. And I am tight with the Easter bunny. And I'm tight with all of the, these people. Mm-hmm. Um but I somehow pillow presents had escaped me. I never knew about them. And mm. it was one of my hiking trips. And one of the seven of us did it one night. And so we all went to, you know, mm-hmm. to sleep. And Oh, this was and- on your recent trip? No, this was when we went hiking in England. Did you get which, them the, the, on the most recent trip? Did no one do pillow? No, house? because we were ca- camping. In the Grand Canyon. It was oh, very right. hard to bring. You know, okay. you were lucky to be able to bring a toothbrush and a chapstick. So we, <laughs> we forewent them. But we did go, okay. do a wonderful mm-hmm. hiking trip in England one year where we actually slept in beds some of the nights. And we um, were treated by you know one of one of the girls did it and we didn't know who it was but then of course we all wanted to do it and mm-hmm. we were going to be gone together for seven nights so we alternated um doing the pillow presents and they were just such fun little things it could be something silly you know it could be a special little lip gloss it could be a tiny little sachet you know it's just something that when you went to go to sleep it was under your pillow so if you're doing it for an overnight guest who now wouldn't be expecting it you know maybe have it tuck out of the pillow a little bit or say to them hey you know look under your look pillow under or something your pillow. like that so something sweet like that it's just so fun and especially if your guests are little now Yvonne I know you were working on Bobby doing pillow chocolates for you every night were you no, how's that going those? how's that going well he did buy me Evan's chocolate which is just awesome it's a local beautiful European chocolate. So I brought it up myself and I will have like (laughs) one before I brush my teeth. But I heard about, let me go back to these. We call them pillow pals. Uh huh. And they were first introduced um, the first time I went to my daughter-in-law's parents' house. And here, um, Abigail's my daughter-in-law, her mother, Victoria had, they call them pillow pockets. And had a magazine and and a chocolate bar and a little note. And it was so sweet. So what did it like drape? Was it something sewn and it was over the pillow? No, that's just what they call it. No. Oh, okay. okay. It's It's just sort of sandwiched between the two pillows. And they just said there's something between your pillows. Oh. Um, also, I a think magazine's a nice idea, a very yes. nice idea. But this is, and speaking of magazines, I try to have current magazines, interesting books, a 
um, a little basket full of like maybe some nuts and a little candy and a granola and some bottled water for my guests when they come. Now, I don't do that for my family because some of the family members will eat me out of house and home. I'm not saying who they are, Jonathan and Christopher. But... <laughs> So that did might- I, I think I read mm-hmm. on Facebook that in Iceland, New Year's Eve, uh, Christmas Eve, excuse me, Christmas Eve, you get a book and chocolates and you're supposed to read the book in bed and eat chocolate. Ah, oh, could I Could this love be that real? Idea. <laughs> <laughs> what a fun Let's thing. Let's go. Reiki well, back. Here we come. Let me just say this. Speaking of Christmas, I like to decorate my rooms with a little touch of whatever holiday uh, is around when my guests are coming. And especially at Christmas, I like I have a little tree in each room. Now, my rooms are good sizes. And this is a pet peeve of mine. I would never want to go to a room where it's so filled with stuff you can barely move. You oh, know, you're banging yeah. your yeah. your knees on the on the 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 bed and because you can't get around. But if you have a like a, a dresser or um I forego um I like chest of drawers. I forego dressers just because I don't think you need them in a guest room. So it, it really frees up a lot of area. But I, I have a couple of rooms that are big enough that I put trees in. That's so sweet. Mm. And, and it's so nice. pretty at night. Yeah, you know? falling asleep with the lights mm-hmm. on. That's and so I charming. have a, a a one bedroom that has a big four poster bed. And I have beautiful, I've used live greens and they were messy. So I have faux greens that are lit all around the posters. At the I want top. that room. Anita, I'm taking that room. Oh, <laughs> Oh, that Darn. room just, is just leave gorgeous. Those up. Hang on. Just leave those up for me. And then this, I I'm, have... I'm having shades of when I was a, a kid and I didn't get anything from my grandparents when they passed away because I was the youngest grandchild and everything else, there were dibs on everything. Wow. So I know that's how Anita, it's feeling now. Yes. Anita, you need us to love you just a little more. Gosh, I, all these right things ahead. are coming out. Okay, oh. we're hugging you. <laughs> But in this Okay, bedroom, I forgot I, about the, the the no Christmas tree. You can have the room with the garden. Oh, no, so that's garland. okay. Yeah. And then I have um, in that room, I decided that for, um, I, I, ha- I just, because we have great outlets that I have um, like a sort of spring-ish uh, duvet. And now a duvet cover is is great as a bedspread during spring and summer. And then also a duvet that I fill for fall and winter. And now I've been collecting Christmas, like Christmas ones. So the room that I have the beautiful faux garland or uh, like, uh, or all around the posts of the bed high up, I have a velvet, red velvet, um, uh, bedspread on and red velvet, pillows and then a white velvet duvet okay i'm not gonna say anything else because you know i basically <laughs> like, like my poor mother-in-law is gonna be in like laura's extra room oh, old, no. old, the crate and barrel but, bed but, but listen you can do beautiful things even in those rooms or like you know we've had on our um on our show notes before the front gate um bed that you know blows right. itself up yeah. and then and it, oh and no, you're absolutely right. I'm it's teasing. beautiful. Yeah, that's why mm-hmm. we're talking today because most people are not mm-hmm. going to have you know a dedicated spode Christmas room for their guests, like you yes. all does. Well, but if you do, <laughs> knock yourself out. Take all the all that advice, and oh right. my gosh, the floor well, your bed with the garlic. Uh, what I want, oh. what I would love. I mean, my dream thing would be to have a little tray with a little bucket of some ice to stay cold and yes. some water. And a or bottle something. of mm-hmm. champagne mm-hmm. Uh, water. <laughs> <laughs> that Champ wouldn't water. be turned away. No, that wouldn't be turned away. Yeah, it's so well, fun. And just the- like a sprig of flowers by their bedside or whatever mm-hmm. little table you're able to, but you know, to get next a, to their bed. Let me just add to this. Be careful that you know what your guests um, are sensitive to or allergic to mm-hmm. as far as um, like I could never put a real tree. I found out that I'm mildly allergic to live greens and I just bear with it because I just love them. But if you would put a full Christmas tree where I'm sleeping, 
you know, that might be a problem. Right. So just make sure you're, that your guests, you ask your guest, you know, what do you have any allergies as far as food and other things? My son's allergic to, and he developed this, um, like after he left our house, he's allergic to cats. Well, we have a cat, so we have to make sure the door is shut. And I was just going to go online and maybe some of our listeners know a good, something that will purify the air to take that cat dander out of that bedroom. Okay. Because I think that's Everybody's a very good idea. Now. Hmm? Everybody needs to get on that now. I'm sure we're going to get some good responses for yeah, you. Yeah, I think, hey. and I think those things are very important. Yeah. And I can I just say, I, I love, because we have a lot of overnight guests stay here at Stone Gable. Wow, you must. Mm, I mean, you do. seem like you've got a system there. Well, and here's another, this, this helps the host as well as the guests. In the morning, the night before, I put together a um, like coffee bar that has everything out. We have a Keurig and we have assorted coffees and have your mugs out and, you know, have your creamer filled, but in the refrigerator and assorted, like, you know, some people like Splenda, some people like, um, you know, Stevia type sugar. Yeah, whatever it is and have those all out, but also have something like some fruits, like this time of year, I love to have, um, orange, like, uh, uh, clementines or tangerines yeah. and some other things out and covered just like maybe like a sweet bread. Oh, pumpkin some fresh bread. fruit sitting out is just what a yeah, luxury. That people, but it's so nice until that they you make, can help themselves yeah, a little bit. That's the key that they feel that they can come down and have a little nosh before you start breakfast. Yeah, because, because maybe they brought a couple of energy bars or something, but there's just nothing like having some fresh fruit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also when you're in somebody's house, you know, even if you know them really well, you know, that's an intimate space that you're now in and mm-hmm. it's their, you know, sort of their morning routine and how their family works. And certainly if it's, you know, your son or daughter or something like that, you know, they, they have a certain degree of comfort, but other people may not have, you know, share that. I mean, some people are comfortable wherever they're planted, but other people might think they have to wait in their bed, you know, until some mm-hmm. they hear someone or, you know, if they smell the coffee or they're, they're concerned about tiptoeing down, they don't want to catch somebody in their, you know, jammies or something like that. But so if you let them know, Hey, this is set up downstairs, whatever time you get up, you know, come on down, make yourself at home. And at least they can have their tea or coffee, which is important to a lot of people early in it's the morning. It's very important yes. to a lot of people. Or just where the orange juice is, yeah. if they need something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one other thing you can think about is how do your guests sleep? I mean, you know, if they're coming to your house, you're perfectly in your rights to ask them, you know, how are you comfortable? A warm room, a cold room. So that might require extra blankets or oh, feel free to leave a window open or something like that. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. They're zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with DOSE to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing DOSE two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold at the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. 
And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT. And use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have another idea. So okay. how about a little basket of books and or magazines and you can, instead of going out and buying, you know, a $30 book here, unless you're buying mine, of course, or Anita's. But, <laughs> or Anita's. Uh-huh, just, a little, uh-huh. just a little plug there. But if, you, if you're going to get some books, maybe you're – Guests, you know, like I know my dad loves mysteries and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I go to my local library that has a great used book shop and it's, it's operated by these lovely uh, older volunteers. So I always end up chatting with somebody and and when I'm in there and you can get books for like a dollar and oh, get out. Yeah. Really? Oh, how nice. Yeah. So nice. And you know, it can be, you know, a book that was, if it's a dollar and you, somebody could just take it with them if they started, or you could maybe send get, it home. That's send it home or books that are, you know, maybe more, do you just leaf through them like a picture book or something they might not pick up. So maybe just a nice assortment in a basket and you could rotate them out, you know, as people are coming like Yvonne's, I mean, it could be like a, a roving library. She's got so many Seriously? guests, right? <laughs> they could just take them home and then you refill your basket or, you know, if you haven't had anybody... Uh, take a book in a while, then you could just go back and and replenish it for five bucks. Here's, you get all new books. Oh, that that is really Great a fabulous idea. idea. Is that our ding ding ding? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ding ding ding. That's a tip and of the day. Let so me look- add to that local. Add some magazines or books about mm-hmm. something local and yeah. brochures. Brochures right. about exactly. things to do. Um, here's here's one of the best things that I do. For my guests, I just buy very inexpensive picture frames when they go on sale at like AC Moore or, you know, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or even um, um, our local Goodwill. And I go onto their Facebook page and find really cute pictures like of their family or their loved ones. And I print out a picture and put it in a little frame, not just, not a big frame, like a, a three by five. And, and I put that near their bed. That is So, so they have a, a, a picture of their loved ones. And then I let them take it home as part of that just a little is, remembrance. No, that's the tip of the day there. Oh, stop that really you can't tell. <laughs> We can share it. Oh, but I can add on to that so you can feel that, you know, it, it is a fair share. I did that one time. Well, I had my roommates from college come, but I didn't go to their Facebook or their, you know, looking for family photos. I pulled up mm-hmm. photos of us together. Oh, so cute. And, you know, stuck them in. And I, you know, of course they were old photos that were not digitized. So I had to go get them <laughs> remade, but everybody got a different one, but it was That's always the so whole group, fun. you know, so. Well, it- This weekend, our house will be filled to the absolute brim and more. Um, It is Anderson's first birthday. Wow. Yes, it was his first birthday. I know, two days ago. So we're having, and we have, I've told you this before, we've had, we have so many birthdays between September and November that we're having this major big costume birthday party weekend whole thing. And aren't I calm for having this going on in a few days? Yeah. Um, But we will be using all of our rooms and it's really good that um, you have great uh, towels. So what I do is I buy all white towels for everybody. Nice. And towels have a um 
a shelf life, I want to say. You know, you can only use them so long. I'm and so glad what- you said that because I don't, I feel like I'm one of these housewives from the 50s when I take the towels out and I go, I just want my towels to be whiter. I want my white. I just, <laughs> what is I use them? all white and I. Um, how long do you think they last? Uh, well, it depends on how long they're used. If if I have, and I keep all my towels in a drawer in everybody's room. Okay. Oh, well, and you know, my mother-in-law depends. used to always have them over the towel bar folded like you were at a hotel. There was the mm-hmm. bath towel, the hand towel. Oh, right. On top and of the, the, towel. the washcloth all folded up and they all match. But although I like the white like you do. But when you have five rooms filled plus an air mattress, you know, that that's a lot of towels. So, uh, and I just have like pegs on the back of a bathroom door that everybody could put theirs on, but I like them to be really nice and clean and they have a life. And I use all white because, you know, you can go to places like home goods. Here's a shout out for home goods and get really great towels at very reasonable prices and, or, um, TJ Maxx or Tuesday morning. And they have lots of white towels that are really nice for very inexpensive. Yeah. That's a, that's such a nice thing to think. Cause sometimes you you know, you're having an overnight guest. And one thing that I wanted to mention, it's an overall tip is, you know, give yourself a little time to get ready for your guests. So you're not running around mm-hmm. the hour before they arrive or goodness gracious, you know, the 15 minutes after they arrive and do, getting these towels in advance is a great idea. And so then that'll get you sort of in prep mode because the worst thing is when you go to reach into the linen closet and all you have left are like the cruddy two towels, you know, that <laughs> yeah, you're on, yeah. on the bottom of your pile. No, no, and then no. you think I could wash the dog with these maybe. And mm-hmm. that's all that's there. And here you well, have to hand it to your guest. Oh, Kelly, I, I keep the towels in the, in the drawers of the room they belong to. I know, but I don't have a special guest room, so I can't Well, that's that. true. Or what oh, about just well, a yeah, basket in a room, a a room or, or someplace on a, um, on a shelf in a closet yeah. just to How put about, a few you towels. You know, preparing that basket that we've talked about, obviously you're not going to put perishable mm-hmm. things in it, but what if you had a nice sized basket where you could roll up a towel and maybe a hand towel or something like that. And then, um, you know, put in there a few things. You could even put a bottle of water in there. It just won't be cold and have it sort of prepped out. And then you can add in, you know, something holiday ashore, that picture, or you could add yeah, in it's a, great a granola idea. bar. Mm-hmm. And that way you can just grab it, plop it out and you're ready to roll. That's, that's a very good mm-hmm. idea. Yeah. Here's another idea. I keep a box filled with sample size that you can get at just your drugstore of, of hairspray, razors, feminine products, everything that you can sort of think of, toothbrushes that people might forget or they might need. Mm, yeah. Good, and good, I good. keep a big box of that and I keep it on the one shelf in, in a linen closet that's convenient. Yeah, some extra people, toothbrushes. I think yeah. that's a great idea. And I just tell people, if you've forgotten anything, is there's anything you need, except if you're some people in my family... Christopher and Jonathan, <laughs> I do, that I don't let them into it because they just think they just, it's like, okay, we get to take everything home. You know? <laughs> well, they're like me when I go to a hotel and I'm like, I can use all that conditioner, but I don't take that. Yeah, there you go. That's but okay. I even take, I even have some um, hotel things that smell really good in there, like uh, really nice lotions and things that if people want to use them, that they know, okay, here's where you can find uh, Advil, mm-hmm. Aleve, contact oh, solution, that's good. things like that. I always forget contact solution. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's a good one. That's a good one. I even have the little um, contact cases, the, you know, the real cheapo little plastic ones. Oh, wow. I keep, well, because Have you I and have... Bobby considered a bed and breakfast? Yeah, down really? the line? <laughs> Come on, people. Our home, our home is like a hotel. <laughs> so, oh, they just don't get paid. I, Mm-hmm. Well, we get paid in a lot of um, non-monetary Aww. ways. Yeah, and how about but the Wi-Fi have... passwords? I need, I need uh, to mention you talked oh, about that. Now that's Anita. important. Yes, put that down on a piece of paper, mm-hmm. or a little card, a little yeah. And card. we actually used to have a little handout when people would come to the farm. Really, it was more for the kids saying, "Don't cross the creek because then you'll be trespassing." And um, oh, you know, we don't. Idea. And there was no Wi-Fi password because there was no Wi-Fi, but it was kind of a. There's no phone, there's no TV, there's no Wi-Fi, get used to it. So 
<laughs> that was in there too. <laughs> oh, that sounds so welcoming. <laughs> no, no, no. It didn't say get used to it, but it just. Was I know, but it's just cute how you said it. Yeah. Here's the other Well, and it was also, I- but yeah, but then that was when we said, and watch for snakes. Mm. Here's another thing that I really didn't think about until we have these new grandbabies, and that is having age appropriate activities for kids that come. Now we have a lot of like outdoor games and footballs and balls and, you know, um, board games and cards and things like that. But thank goodness I kept a lot of my kids toys and, you know, I go down to that basement and think, okay, what age is this? You know, like Anderson's one. Okay. Well, I'm going to bring up like um, the the Fisher Price Farm or this or that and the other that kids can play with. Or I if and before that, um, I would just make sure parents knew, you know, we don't have all of these things. Please come prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing really. I mean, actually, that's what I would send out that thing, uh, that uh, sheet of paper actually to people mm-hmm. before they came. So they knew, you know, you need to be bring some boots if you're walking out in the fields because there are snakes, you know, and uh, there, there is no Wi-Fi. So be prepared, you know, make bring a book if you're wanting, if you're going to be right. bored. That's well, you know, and we're talking all about how to spoil our guests. And there's also the flip side of that is being a good guest. And I am 100% sure that everyone who listens to Decorating Tips and Tricks is a fabulous guest. Um, I'm of also course. pretty sure that we've probably all had a guest in our homes that was not such a great guest. So when we were getting ready for this episode, and I was think I thought back to um, a memory that I hadn't really uh, revisited in a long time, and I once had a a guest in my apartment. I lived in um, Tribeca in New York, and it's when I was a very young lawyer. And I was working very long hours and it was a a, a man, a guy who I had shared a flat with, with my friend who I went to England with. And so we paid to live, you know, in his flat and we had our own room and our own bathroom and all that stuff. And he was a very nice man. He was, you know, man, he was like probably like 30 at the time and, you know, just a business relationship, nothing going on there. And so we were friends and we stayed, I think we lived in that flat, shared that flat with him for like six months. So, you know, we had a relationship and friendship and whatnot, but some years passed and then he was coming to New York. Mm -hmm. So he, so could I stay with you? And I thought, well, gosh, there's a lot of hotels in New York, but I guess you could stay with me. (laughs) All right. And I hit, and you and were I was how old? Probably 25, 26. And, and he, he was, was probably about 35, 40 ish. Okay. I see okay. a problem yeah. already, but go ahead. It's oh, a mother, but go and ahead. I, go and ahead. I'm, so I'm living in a one bedroom apartment and I'm working really long hours. And I had just started dating Peter. And I thought, you know, after I said yes, because I just. The yeah, I thought, how can thickens. I say no? You know, even hmm. though I paid him rent, but you know, whatever. I mean, he even came, you know, it, uh, he ultimately came to our wedding down the line. I mean, he was a friend, but okay, so sure. And I think he's going to come and, and he has business and, you know, this is not going to last that long. But did he, he own, you know, a, he did dachshund. Not own a dachshund? <laughs> but, and he, and he did not own a dachshund. So he, that you, you will know what that is if you listen to yeah. the podcast. So regularly. he, uh, you know, he came while I was at work, um, because I don't know what flight he took, whatever. So I left the key with the doorman and all of that. And so I came home from work, and now this is the first evening. And I walk in, and I was on trial at that time, not myself, but I was the prosecutor. So I was really tired, and I had a lot on my mind. And Peter was going to uh, come over, and we were going to go out for dinner. So I have a one bedroom apartment with what you might guess one bathroom again one bedroom apartment yeah but, five year old okay but he's, i mean he's 35 he year old leaving. man oh, coming over okay not a problem right and so but i'm i'm just dating whatever Peter, and go so ahead. If you're gonna go i my trial was over i i think i won i remember you know it was it worked out well and peter was gonna take me out for a little celebratory dinner and now we just had started dating and i come in and i like kind of ch- you know quickly change out of my suit and change and um i go and I, and I hear this snoring from my bathroom. He had come in and, you know, he's British. And he, so he wanted to take a bath, I guess. But he took a bath and he fell asleep in the bathtub. <laughs> 
in, in my only bathroom in my apartment. Oh, and he was no. sleeping in there. It was the strangest thing. <laughs> And then I couldn't change, you know, I changed, but you know, I couldn't brush your teeth, couldn't get into the bathroom or anything. And then Peter came and I thought, well, what do we do? Like, do we, what if he falls, you know, falls under the water? And so Peter knocked on the door. It was very strange. But that's a what not to do when you're a guest in somebody's house. And I didn't have any of these ideas for all these fabulous little pillow presents or Wi-Fi passwords or any of these good things. But I was just happy to have him wake up and get out of my bathroom. <laughs> Well, let me just say to my daughter who might be listening, if some 35-year-old man wants to stay in your one-bedroom apartment, the answer is no. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. That was so silly. But yeah, that was my worst experience with a guest. Other than that, my mother-in-law is a dream when she comes. She's lovely. She's usually our only overnight guest. That's good. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quinn's. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at $49.90. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. This is a fun little cautionary, cautionary tale. tale to end on. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> to all all people who have young women in their home, oh this is a goodness. good one to tell them. Um, uh, we just we hope that when you have um, overnight guests, that we have given you some tips and ideas of how to spoil them. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. Hey, everybody, we want to thank you so much for listening to Decorating Tips and Tricks. And we want to make it even easier for you to listen. And it's easier if you subscribe. You just click the subscribe button on our website, www.decoratingtipsandtricks.com. Or you can subscribe through Apple Podcast or any of your favorite podcast listeners. When you subscribe, DTT comes free right to you three days a week. So until next time.